with Mother's Day just around the corner, I thought this was the perfect time to have a go at this little project. I'd seen a couple of different variations of it and I thought, well, how hard can it be to uh, design it and make it yourself? G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith, I'm Darren. And this is a uh, cute little project for uh, all the mothers out there. And this is just a prototype. I just wanted to sort of roughly put it together to show exactly how you can do it too. We're using a variety of different programs. We're using uh, Image R, which is a great little program that a lot of you are probably familiar with. I'm using Adobe Illustrator and I'm also using Lightburn, of course, to uh, make this project happen. So let's jump in and see exactly how it's done. Okay, so pardon the pun, but the first piece of the puzzle is creating these puzzle pieces. And that sounds a bit like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. But uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is I'm using a tool called Image R, and uh, it's a fantastic uh, program, this one. And this is the offline version. So you get this tools package with the offline version. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do over here. And one of those is actually this puzzle generator. And I have to say, it's pretty awesome. So you can actually, uh, you've got quite a few controls down here. And uh, so this was the final puzzle that I ended up uh, downloading, but I'll, I'll just show you what all these different tabs do. So the seed really is just cha changing the configuration and you can see that you could create any number of different puzzle pieces um, in different configurations. So your puzzles don't actually have to be the same. The next one across is the tab size and that's the tabs, that's these individual tabs here. So you can reduce the size of those tabs and uh, make them smaller, depending on what you're wanting. But, um, you know, I like them a little bit bigger. I think it looks a bit more like that traditional style of um, jigsaw puzzle. The angle as well is just how angular you want the pieces, so you can have them nice and square, or you can have them offset, which gives them that little bit more random sort of a look for a puzzle, um, which, which is pretty cool. So the corner radius is the next setting there, so which will just give you the radius of the corners of the puzzle, not the individual pieces of the puzzle, but just the corners. Okay, so the next section here is the pieces, and you're not really sort of limited by the, the numbers here. It just takes a little while to process. So if we made this one a little bit bigger, for example, let's just make it a 400 by 400 millimetres. And then we can up this one to, you know, you can keep going as much as you want, really. Um, it just uh, takes a little bit more processing power to, um, to as you're adjusting it, because it's an algorithm that's working out all of these different settings. But that's pretty cool that you can go to any sort of size. That would be a 400-piece puzzle. Uh, you could definitely go bigger and more pieces if you wanted to, providing you do have the capacity. So that is really cool. I had a central piece here. Uh, so you could even make it seven by seven if you had a much bigger uh, family um, and then just change that sort of seed around so you had that nice big piece in the middle like this one here, which would be a nice piece to put mum in the centre. And then you've got all of these options around that you can use without having to use any edge pieces. So you just need to download the file, which will export that as a SVG file. And uh, the, the next step in that process is to have a look at that one in uh, Adobe Illustrator and I'll explain why we're doing that in just a moment. Okay, so here we are with that SVG file in Adobe Illustrator and the reason I brought it into Adobe Illustrator is because I need to uh, create individual pieces for the purpose of what we're actually doing and um, I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, I haven't been able to establish how to do that directly in Lightburn at this point in time. So uh, I'm sure there's a way. And if you do know how to do that, but then certainly just let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to take that on board. But in Adobe Illustrator, it's a pretty simple process for that uh, to create these puzzle pieces. Because uh, currently, if we look at individuals, they're, they're actually lines. So I can just, let me just move that out of the way. So you can see that that's actually just lines. They're not actual individual pieces. So in uh, Adobe Illustrator, all I need to do is select all of my objects there. And under Object, I go down to Compound Path and Make. So that makes it all into one compound path. And from there, under the Pathfinder, if you, if you don't see this um, tool here or this tool 
uh, palette in there, you just go under the window and you're looking for Pathfinder. So you can just tick the box there. And what I want to do is I want to divide these individual pieces. And we do have a tool exactly for that, which is called Divide, which is this first one here. You can see the lines in the middle. Click on Divide and give them a stroke color. So what I can do now is grab these pieces individually. So you can see that I've got individual pieces there. And uh, that's exactly what I'm hoping to achieve. Okay, so let's jump into Lightburn and we'll get started on designing this Mother's Day puzzle. Rightio, so here we are in Lightburn. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab my um, puzzle pieces that are separated and that's as an SVG file as well. Open that one there and you can see that there we've got those puzzle pieces and uh, I can individually select those pieces, which is exactly what we're wanting to do. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to um, work out the pieces that I want. And for that, I'm just going to do some text and we do the, the mum. And I'm going to pop that on a um, fill layer, which will be this layer here. And I just need to size that according to the um, the size that I want. Let's just make that a wee bit smaller. You can make these as, as big or as small as you like, as long as it sort of fits the pieces, I guess. And from there, I need to put myself in there as well. Now, this may be a little bit different to the one that I've actually ended up uh, running with, but um, you'll get the idea that you can actually do this yourself. And then I've just got the two kids. So we've got Georgie. And if I drag that one over there, see that one's not going to fit there. So I'm just going to angle that one. And then make that a bit smaller. I don't think they need to be uniform in how you're actually doing this. This is a puzzle after all. So it doesn't really sort of matter as long as the names are in there. But what I might do is uh, with this one is I might just duplicate that, which is Command-D on a Mac. I can move that to another piece here and go back to the text tool and change that. Okay, and again, I can just rotate that to fit um, how I want it to fit there. So there's no right or wrong here. It's exactly how you want to do it. So that would be the the um, the pieces that I would want to um, create for this particular uh, puzzle that I'm doing. So I can just um, I can just get rid of all these other pieces for the time being. So I'll just delete those because I don't really need them. Get rid of those. Get rid of those, and that one. So there we have the four pieces that I'm going to be using for this particular puzzle. And uh, what I might do is I'll just, uh, you could cut these together and just eliminate the overlapping lines. But uh, for the purpose of the example, I'm just going to um, pull these apart so you can see that they are individual pieces. Okay, so they're the parts of the, the puzzle that I'm going to uh, engrave first and then cut out, and um, and then that will be good to go. So let's just uh, group those together for the time being, and we'll just move those out of the way. Next part of the puzzle is we're going to create the background, and I'm just going to hold down Shift while I'm using the Circle tool, and holding down Shift makes it a uniform circle. And that one is going to be on a, a line because we're going to cut that out. So that's going to be the background. So I'm just going to pop some text on there now. And uh, you can put anything in here really. It doesn't really need to be um, anything uh, specific. But it's, it's a message that's uh, designed by you. <coughs> so I'm just going to pop some text in there. You are the piece. that holds this family together. Something like that. You could do whatever you like there. We'll make that a little bit bigger as well. And 
uh, maybe a bit smaller there. And that's going to be on a fill layer. And um, I'm just going to center that on that background. I'm going to duplicate this one. And Command D. And move that one over here. So that's that's going to be the backing plate essentially with this engraving on it. And then this will be the front plate. Now what I need to do is an offset on this one. And I need to do, because I've copied the outside one, I'm just going to do an inward one. You can make that as thick or thin as you like. Um, let's just make it six. doesn't really sort of matter. And um, okay. So I'm just going to weld those together. So we've now got one shape. I need to create another bar that's going to go across here. And we know that that one is six millimeters. Make that one six. So it's the same, the same thickness as the other one there. And we're just going to chuck that across here, round about there. And make sure that that's within the boundaries of the circle because what we're going to do is uh, weld those together. So that gives us that shape. And the, just need to pop mum in here. So just need to pick a font there. And for this particular one, I'm going to use this one, Ganache, because uh, it looks pretty cool. And I can just grab that in here. Now, I want to connect the bottom uh, to the base there. And then I want to have some side connections as well. So around about that will do. Let's just go a little bit closer there. I'm just going to bring that one down just so everything is connecting there. And maybe just center those up. Alrighty. So it looks pretty good. So we can see that that's mum. And then we're going to highlight those two and just weld those together. So there we have that, that uh, mum that will sit up quite nicely. We've got good connection points, so it'll be a nice little sort of cutout. That's the piece, uh, one piece, and I can just chuck these pieces within there. doesn't really matter because this is going to be a cutout piece, uh, so I can just chuck those in wherever I need to and put the relevant settings on. So the one thing that I need to do with this one is just uh, make sure that... Um, this is going to sit around about there. So I can just hold down shift and that'll keep it on that path. And then all I do is center those up as well. And that project is ready to go. Okay, so what did you think? I think that was a pretty cool little project. And I guess the whole point of it is just showing you the process so you can actually design it yourself. Now, I'm not a designer by any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, you know, this is a little bit sort of geometric, but you might come up with some really great designs that you can uh, improve upon this one uh, considerably. And uh, it might be a project that you can offer to uh, your family or your friends or, you know, your local neighborhood people. So, uh, Anyway, I'm, I was really excited to be able to put this together and uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. Until the next one, be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.